and open the risk management and insurance notes so we can complete those. Okay, so here is um, just some terminology. The first one is an insurance policy. That is essentially just a contract between you and the insurance company. It's going to outline what your coverage is. It's going to tell you how much you're going to pay, either monthly, bi-yearly, or yearly. It's going to tell you what your deductible is. It's going to have any exclusions, so things that aren't covered. It's going to line out and state who is covered on their insurance policy. It is not a short one-page document. It's normally several pages. Um, and you will have an insurance policy for every type of insurance that you purchase and own. The next is coverage. So that will be in your insurance policy. And that is going to be outlining the risks and different losses that are covered underneath that insurance policy. So for example, automobile, it's going to outline what is going to cover on your automobile. If it was health insurance, it's going to specifically state what kind of things that that insurance, covered, insurance policy is covering and what kind of things is being excluded. The premium is just a fancy word for your bill. So your premium is the amount that you pay either monthly, maybe you pay it twice a year, maybe you pay it yearly. So for example, my health insurance, I pay for that every single month and it comes directly out of my paycheck. My car insurance, I pay twice a year. So in May and then later on in the year, I pay it again. For life insurance, I pay one chunk every single year towards the end of the year. So your premium is going to be different for every type of insurance, different amount, different times, and different pay or, um, billing periods. The policyholder is the person who is purchasing the insurance. They are obviously going to be the ones being covered, but sometimes there are other people covered underneath that policy. So for example, um, our homeowner's insurance, my husband Brady is the main policy holder, but I am also on the policy. So the policy holder for you for your health insurance might be your parents, but you're still covered under that policy. A claim. When we file a claim with an insurance company, that is simply asking them to pay for losses we suffered. So maybe I was in a car accident, fender bender, and my whole passenger side is caved in on my vehicle. Bad deal, right? I don't want to pay for that out of pocket. So I'm going to file a claim with my insurance company in hopes that they will help me pay for those repairs and damages. A deductible is the amount that we as policyholders have to pay before the insurance is going to pay anything. So normally a deductible on a vehicle is anywhere from five to $800. So before that insurance company paid for my car claim, I'm going to have to pay five to $800 of the loss before insurance pays for the rest. Okay, so hopefully you filled those out in your notes along the way. All right, deductible versus premium. Your deductible, we've already kind of talked about that. And premium, we've already kind of talked about also. Premium is your monthly bill or bi-yearly or yearly. It's the bill you're paying for insurance. Deductible is the amount you're paying before insurance kicks in. They work hand in hand, okay? If we have a really low deductible, meaning we don't have to pay a whole lot up front for insurance before insurance starts paying, then that means we're paying a very high premium for that service. It could be flipped. You could have a really high deductible, meaning if something happens, you're paying a lot out of pocket up front before insurance pays. In return, that would cause us to have a very low premium, meaning we're paying very little for that insurance coverage. So these two work together. If one is low, the other is going to be high. The goal as a consumer is that we get these as reasonable as possible. So we make sure we choose an insurance policy that has a deductible that we could afford in the event we need to file a claim. And we choose an insurance policy with a premium, a bill that we can also afford to have that coverage. Okay, last little bit on your notes. There are two types of insurance that are required in the state of Kansas. The first one is automobile insurance. So Technically, we only have to have liability coverage, but there are five types of 
automobile insurance out there. You can have a little bit of each type of coverage, um, but the one that is state mandated is liability insurance. Automobile insurance is not mandated across all 50 states. Okay, so that's specifically a Kansas mandate. Other states also mandate it, but Kansas is one of them. The other one, um, due to Obamacare, which if you have been keeping up with politics, that has been in the news a lot and on the political platform. Um, right now, it is nationally mandated that you have some form of health insurance coverage, whether it's state provided, employee provided, um, you have to have some sort of coverage. Um, it has been taken out that you don't have to pay a fee at the end um, on your tax return if you do not have coverage. Um, but as of right now, it is still mandated that you have health insurance coverage. Okay, hopefully you um, don't have any more questions on insurance basics. And if you do, please reach out to me. Actually, let's go over one more thing in Canvas here. Okay, so you guys need to open up the 411 on insurance and risk. It's going to look like this. It's going to be, um, sorry. Strange. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so you're going to read a little bit and then you're going to answer a few questions. And then you're going to do a little math. So you're going to read a little more, try your hand. Again, I'm not going to ridicule you if this math is not correct, but try your best. See if you can kind of understand how group policy works and individual policies work. And then you're going to just tell me and analyze these five different um, individuals, generic, and what their risks are and how you would rank them on a risk rating and answer a question. Okay, so complete this, turn it in. And then the other thing that you need to accomplish tomorrow on your virtual day is the types of insurance that are available to consumers. So specifically, there are five types out there. Oh, here we go again. Okay, maybe it's gonna go, there we go. Um, that Investopedia, which is a pretty reliable consumer website, recommends every consumer has, but there are several, several other types of insurance out there. I gave you an article, a couple articles to get you started, um, but you could list, simply list any type of insurance that is available to consumers. So give me five types that are highly encouraged you purchase as a consumer, and then give me five more types that are available out there as consumers. Again, this is for your virtual day. The only other thing you need to do is you need to study um, the vocabulary that we have learned thus far. So next class period, you are going to have a insurance vocabulary test. So we took a pretest last class. You are going to take a quiz next class. So the Quizlet is in Canvas um, if you would like to use it or you can create your own.